Hello everyone and welcome to Art is for Everyone here on YouTube and I know it's been a while since I've had a video here um, but there's a good reason and um, I had been very sick for a while actually and uh, was hospitalized and then found out I needed to have some extensive surgery and I have been recovering so it's been a little bit difficult for me to, to do my normal routine. Um, this is the third week of recovery and I'm just starting to where I can stand up for good amounts of time and, and do certain things as long as I don't lift anything. The hardest thing for me still is to sit in a chair straight up so I can sit comfortably in a recliner but sitting straight up is kind of hard. So anyways, that's where I've been and um, I appreciate your patience and I've really, really missed being here. So um, I thought today for our Artists for Everyone, project we would um, be inspired by my friend Janet and I'm gonna put some images into the, the video here in just a second and tell you about her um, but you can if, if you want some ins lovely inspiration for beautiful um, just sort of spirit filled paintings you can follow her on Instagram her name is Bog Wild B-O-G-W-I-L-D which you'll see in these images so these are some of Janet's exquisite snow globes, and you'll notice how intuitive and beautiful they are. These are our inspiration point. You can follow Janet on Instagram by searching for Bog Wild. You can see that name there, Bog Wild. But I just wanted you to see her beautiful, beautiful work. So these were very, very inspiring to me. First of all, because they're just lovely and there's just this beautiful simplicity to them, but they're just so effective and dreamy. Um, and it also special to me because I love snow globes, and I was telling Janet, this is my favorite, this one here. It's a, you can see the ring light in there. Um, it's a, just, just three winter trees. It's a music box, and this is my favorite, and I've actually painted it before. Um, and I looked and looked and looked for a picture of that painting and I can't find it and I, I'm I mean this is like three years ago So I can't find it. So I thought it would be fun a fun project for our, uh, us to do together and um, I asked Janet if I could share her her images with you and she said absolutely So I hope you find them as inspiring as I do and So we're gonna start with a really simple line drawing and this is the line drawing right here So you may not um, need a line drawing, <clears throat> but you could also just pause the screen and do, do a screenshot of, of the actual photo of the snow globe and print it, or you can pause and do a screenshot of the line drawing and print it. Or if you're a member of my Patreon, I um, upload um, line drawings for all projects that need them. Um, so if you're on Patreon, you'll find the line drawing there that you can just copy, you know, pr print out. So once you have your line drawing, um, what I want you to do, and when you print it out, print it out small. You know, this is a maybe a five by seven piece of paper. And so um, I printed it out small. It's about, I don't know, maybe three and a half inches tall. Okay, um, so you can look at something and um, to draw from. In a, in a good size. Uh, if you print it out big, you can also just make it smaller, you know, your drawing. So however you want to do that is fine. But I've basically made my line drawing with pencil on a piece of um, 5x7 uh, watercolor paper. And this, I believe, is Canson Moulin de Roy that it came in a big sheet and I tore it down into smaller sheets. Um, so it's cold pressed paper. 100% cotton, um, 140 pounds, so it's, it's fairly um, stiff. And then I also have, obviously, my water and paper towels and all that, but I have my Artists for Everyone watercolor set. And if you don't have this set um, by Wildthorn, um, I give 
substitutions in the description box below because it, any watercolors will be fine. These are really beautiful and I love them, but any watercolors will be fine. And so you'll have, um, and, and obviously they're just basic colors. You know, I mean, we've got yellow and burnt sienna and a, um, I mean, there's the yellow ochre. The wood rose is special, but you could certainly substitute like a Venetian red. There's a metallic gold, a raw umber, a violet. Um, you know, a cool blue and a green that um, Wildthorn calls Viridian, but it's actually not like traditional Viridian. Um, it's a little bit warmer and a little bit more opaque, well, actually a lot more opaque than traditional Viridian. So tr traditional Viridian would actually be lovely. Um, you could use that as well. You just might have to warm it up a little bit. So um, I also want to use some white. And here I have a pan of white by Stoneworks Mill another amazing handmade paint company and this is called Cumulus and this is part of um, Stoneworks Mills uh, Winter Horizon palette that's due to launch anytime now I think and what's special about this is it is a very creamy opaque white but it also f blends out to just this transparent pearly shimmer it's gorgeous um, Daniel Smith also makes a um, pearlescent white that you could try. Um, me actually, many, many manufacturers make them. Schminky makes one. Um, Fine Tech makes one that's a little bit less expensive. It comes in a little round pan, so you can find it. But even just titanium white will be absolutely fine. But I just want some white. Wildthorn has a buff titan, which is beautiful, um, but it's just too yellow for this purpose. So we, we do want a, a true white. So we're going to look. Um, oh, I'm also using my um, a triple zero squirrel mop. So this is actually a synthetic squirrel mop by Raphael Castaneo. Um, I think, well, I don't know. It's Raphael and it's a synthetic squirrel mop, size triple zero. It's a travel brush, which is fabulous. Um, so what I want us to do is I want us to look at our reference image, okay? Because one of the key things that's gonna make our snow globe appear transparent and, and glossy, like there's a world within, is that we have highlights. And um, the line drawing shows where the highlights are from the reference image that I took. But, hold on, I'm just gonna open my reference image here. Um, so it, it shows it, it shows where the highlights are. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave those areas the white of the paper, okay? And then the top highlight, because of how I took the photo, okay? And um, you can see the blue sky out my window. There's a little rim of blue in these upper highlights. And I think it's really pretty, so I'm gonna make it blue, okay? You don't have to. You could leave it white as well, and it would be just as effective, all right? So the other thing to notice is that the, the snow globe itself is not white, all right? It's actually, you're seeing through the glass and you're seeing the background color, all right? So <clears throat> we could actually paint a background color on this and just sort of let it fade off into the distance. The problem with that is, is that if we paint a background and we paint a surface to put it on, Okay, we're going to have to paint the shadow, which can be really, really tricky. And I'm not sure, I mean, I like these projects to be accessible to all levels. And so I'm not sure it would really be appropriate for a brand new beginner because a shadow with a reflection in it is a tricky thing. If it, if it didn't have it, it lo wouldn't look realistic. Okay, so we're just going to stick to the snow globe. And if you are up to putting this background in the shadow, and please do, because I would love to see it, and it would be really fun. But for our purposes here, we're just gonna stick with the snow globe. So, we're gonna stay true to the reference photo that way, and we're gonna make the back of our snow globe a different color. Now, you'll notice that I only drew one tree, and I drew the center tree. Now, in the reference image, the center tree is like a, a silvery color, but we're going to make ours green. Okay, so that's a little bit of poetic license that we're going to take. and we're But we're going to stay true to the shadows that we see on the tree. Okay, I'm going to make a cup of tea and I will be right back. I have to sit down and rest every, every now and then. Um, so um, I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I have a nice cup of tea. What, I, I'm wondering what your favorite morning tea is. Mine is Irish breakfast with a tiny bit of milk. Um, I love it so much. 
Mm. So anyways, let's, um, let's begin. So we're going to look at our reference image and we're going to start actually with the background wash in the snow globe. And so we're going to mix ourselves this sort of kind of, it's just a very neutral color, okay? And I'm going to start with a little bit of ochre leger, which would be yellow ochre, and put some on my palette. And I'm going to use a touch of the Viridian, so some kind of green, and that was way too much. So it's a very, very strong color, which traditional Viridian is, is not. It's much more transparent. Um, so do you see I'm just making sort of a warm, opaque yellow-green between yellow ochre and a green color, like Viridian. And even traditional Viridian might be a little too cool for this. And that looks about right. See how it's just sort of a kind of a murky olive. So I'm going to start by putting a water glaze down. And I'm going to avoid any place, okay, that I have a highlight. All right. So basically, I'm going to take clean water. I'm going to paint right over my tree, by the way. And I'm going to take that water glaze around the highlights. I'm not touching the highlights. So I'm using the tip of my brush. You see, I'm just going right up to those edges. And there's a little bit on top but I'm leaving those highlights white. And you want your pencil lines to be as faint as possible, even fainter than mine. Um, I couldn't really do that because I, I need you to see the pencil lines. But make them as faint as possible and we will be trying to erase them when we're done. So see, I'm still, I'm moving this water glaze all around the glass part of the globe right down to over the, the tree area. And I am going to actually avoid this area right down here. I should have done that, but I didn't. It's just easier if we avoid it. So basically where you see the snow in the picture, this little line down here under the tree, if you can avoid that area, that will be great. And once my water glaze is down, avoiding those highlights, I'm just going to take the paint and just randomly drop it in. Nice and fluid. Just drop it in. Again, avoiding down here under the tree. I can go right up to it. Okay. And then I'm just really going to pick up my painting and I'm going to move it. And I'm going to let that water glaze move around the highlights. And just kind of move around. All right. And then I'm going to take my clean, damp brush. And I'm going to be very careful, but I'm going to just sort of go around the edges to make sure that that color sort of seeps all the way to the edge. And down here I can sort of clean it up where I don't want it to be. But I'm taking the tip of my brush and I'm just sort of moving it around, going around those highlights. There. And once that's done, I'm going to take more water and I'm just going to drop it in here and there. Just to sort of lighten up what I have. I want it to be very fluid. And still, I'm always trying to keep those edges as clean as possible. And 
Okay. One more time. Tip of my brush around the edge. Just to soften it and make sure my edges are really nice. And then, because I painted over that bottom part, hopefully you didn't, um, with water, I'm going to take a tissue and just blot that lower area so it's lighter. Okay? So what I need to do now is let this dry completely before I go any farther with this. All right? But... <clears throat> At the same time, I want to start mixing up other colors. So the next color we're going to use is we're going to make some of this beautiful clear blue. So we're just going to take a little bit of the blue Premier, put lots of water in it, and that's going to go into our upper highlights. Okay, so we have that ready. These highlights here are just going to stay white. They're just going to be white. Now, if you look in your snow globe, you see in the reference, you see a little bit of blue over here. And I'm just going to drop in just a tiny bit of blue while it's still wet. And then let that dry. All right, so I have my blue mixed up for the highlight. And I also want to mix up a color for um, the base of, of the snow globe. So we're going to use raw umber and I'm going to make a puddle of raw umber and into that raw umber. So I've got one puddle for, for part of it. And I'm going to make another puddle of raw umber and I'm going to add to it a little bit of the blue Premier just to change the hue of it a little bit to make a, a, a raw umber that's got sort of a blue cast to it. So now I have the light blue, the raw umber, and then a raw umber with a little bit of blue in it. And we're going to do our tree the very, very last. So we're not worried about that just yet, okay? And I see that I have a little bit of a smudge of watercolor on my paper from my hand. So I'm going to try to lift that up. That's better. Okay, so now I want to let this dry completely. If I did anything here, I could start putting in some of the base color, but I want to wait because if any of it touches this and it's wet, it's going to whoosh into there and we won't be happy with that. So let's let it dry. We'll come back, we'll erase some lines, and then we'll start the next step. Okay, so this layer is now dry. <clears throat> and what I want to do before I continue on is I want to take an eraser. Actually, uh, let's see here. I want to take an eraser and I want to try to erase the pencil lines around the edges. Not necessarily every, everywhere else, but just around the edges. And they should erase pretty well with the colors that we've used. So you can see I'm not going anywhere near where I have the, the tree, but I'm just going where I have the highlights and around the edges of the glass part of the snow globe. So that worked pretty well. And now, my, the edge where my highlight's supposed to be is gone, but we can see where the edge of the snow globe is otherwise, and we can use that as our guide. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put those blue highlights in, okay? And I'm going to wake up this little bit of blue, that I, this really pale blue that I mixed here, okay? And I'm going to dry my brush off to roll it to the best point I can, and then just pick up more of that blue, just kind of roll it. I want a really, really nice point. And I'm going to fill in the blue paint with the tip of my brush. And basically, I'm just sort of completing the circle here. And then it comes down a little bit here, and then a little bit here, 
and a little bit here. Okay, that's it. It's just this pale blue right at the very top. And once that's down, I can take my brush, wash it, you know, clean it off and dry it off. And I can very, very softly just sort of soften the lower edge. So it's very, very subtle. Okay? The other highlights, I'm going to leave white. All right? Now, to enhance those white highlights, I'm going to take some of my original kind of murky green that we made, and I'm just going to go right around that highlight, sort of on the bottom side, and then this one here as well. Rinse my brush, dry it off, and then I'm just softening the edge, the lower outer edges of that highlight down into the rest of the painting. So I just want the hard edge right around that highlight. And I'm just sort of softening it out otherwise. So now to see how that highlight is actually stronger. Okay. Just sort of softening it down. Okay, so we're gonna leave um, this alone again until, until that part dries, but we're gonna focus now on the bottom part. Now one thing we have to consider, and it's not that clear in our reference photo, because this, this snow globe is clear, it's glass, you can see through it. And so the back side of the base is going to be barely visible, okay? So what I want to do is I want to take a little bit of that raw umber, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I want to take a little bit of the raw umber and blue mix that we made, kind of pull it over here. Mix a tiny bit of the green background into it. So this is fairly transparent. And I just want to, to paint a little bit of that from the edge of the glass globe in. Just a tiny little bit. Rinse my brush, dry it off and roll it to a point. And I'm just softening it out toward the edge. See how I'm just sort of... Um, using a clean damp brush just to sort of soften it out because I want it to barely be there okay it's just sort of a hint all right and then once this is dry we're going to use our eraser again to get rid of those pencil lines now we're going to leave the base where the snow is alone but what we're going to do now is we're going to paint the actual base and I'm going to use the raw umber and I'm going to paint it directly onto the space. Now you'll notice at the top, there's a little bit of light in the corner, so I'm gonna skip that part. And I'm just gonna go right over, try to stay in the line as well as possible. And just paint a nice layer of this raw umber all over my base. It's fairly light. We're not going too dark yet. We're just getting a base. And we want to give it some dimension. So when we start with this sort of what I would call a mid-tone layer, we can drop in more color where we want darker bits to be. And notice also that I did not put in that detail at the bottom where there's like a little divot in the base. I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. So immediately I'm gonna rinse my brush and dry it off. And I'm just gonna soften that little upper edge where I left it light. There's a highlight there and I just wanna soften that. Okay, now I'm also going to rinse my brush, dry it off, and I'm going to pull through a highlight where I see it in my reference photo. So just take my clean, dry brush and just sort of lift out some color right there. But then I'm going to pick up more and I'm going to drop it in 
along the edge. And then underneath, like here where it dips in, I'm just going to drop in more color. And then on, on the um, right side of that highlight, and then down underneath, just dropping in more of that brown. So I put a base layer down, then I swiped out some highlights. Okay, now I'm starting to add more depth into it. So I can even pick up more of the raw umber and drop even more in along where that curve is, where I see the darkest places. Right under that highlight, toward the bottom of it, just dropping in some darkness. little bit up here right along the edge just dropping in some darkness okay so it looks kind of modeled it's not perfect and that's fine okay that's all that's really all we need to do we can take our brush and again just sort of soften in a few areas but mostly we want to make sure that our edges are nice and clean. So we can run the tip of our brush around the edges and make sure they're clean. So it looks a little bit modeled, like I said, but that's what we want, okay? We want to have that contrast of the dark and the light because when this totally dries, we're gonna take some of that bluish color that we made and put a glaze on top to unify it, okay? And so I can bring this out over here. I'm looking at my reference. I see how it's dark over here, okay? But I do have that, that little area of light right under where the snow globe is. All right, so the base is now done for now. So now we're going to go back and we're going to talk about our tree. All right, and for our tree, we can just go right into this kind of murky color that we made, and we're going to add some more viridian, quite a bit. We want to get a nice medium green going, and then within that medium green, we're going to add to a small section of it. See, I can just wipe my brush through and sort of separate it with a dry brush. We're going to add a tiny bit of burnt sienna or sienna brulee. Maybe a little bit more viridian and a little bit more sienna brulee just to give us a deeper green. Red and green are complementary colors. This is a warm, warmer green. So I'm going to just keep adding the two viridian and sienna brulee until I get a darker green. So you see that the difference? So we, we have a light green. Hold on just a second. We have a light green base, all right, because we have some light green on the tree in the highlights. We have a medium green and we have a dark green. So we're going to start with the tip of our brush using the medium green. And if you notice, the, the, the tree is darker along the left side, okay? So we're just going to go in and we're just going to start flicking in little bits of green with the tip of our brush, sort of in an angled motion. You see how, if you look at the reference image, they have these little kind of pointy areas, but I'm not going to be a slave to that. I'm just using the direction that I see. And I'm just putting in some little diagonal lines
Okay, that's it. Very, very simple. And then I'm going to pick up the darker color and I'm going to concentrate on the left side where it's darker and I'm going to drop in some of the darker color. Here and there. And then just a tiny bit of it here and there on the other side. And I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave it be. So that is actually beautifully that's beautiful. Now we can take a little bit of water and every now and then drop in just a little bit of clear water here and there just to give it some more density toward the center of the tree. Right, where where it's going to be done so I just use a little clear water just to sort of push those colors together all right when this dries all right we can take a little bit more we can make a little bit more of that murky color maybe and put it in but I don't even think we need to I think it's just perfect now the tree trunk we're just going to use a raw umber And we're going to pull down, it's darker on the left, so I'm just going to pull down a little bit from the tree there. And then just use my brush to soften it over to the other side. So darker on the left side, lighter over toward the right side just a little bit there and we'll put the shadow in our snow in a little while that is all we can do at this point I do want to add a little bit more of that pale blue color just touch it in here and there to our highlight just a little bit there Excuse me. And I'll also see a little bit of it over here. We can just add in a few little marks of that blue. And it'll dry fairly light. Like it's barely there. Okay? All right, we're going to let this dry again and then we'll be back to do the finishing touches. Okay, so this is drying up nicely, and before I move on, um, we're going to do some erasing again, but before I move on, I wanted to put the shadow in here. And what we're going to do, um, I just, I, I want a little bit of a shadow at the base here, and we're going to use this um, same color, the raw umber, with a little bit of the blue in a very light dilution. And I'm going to look at my reference photo and you can see that it just there it just sort of dot 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 like over here and then it's just along the base okay and it kind of comes up and over like that so just a little bit over here and then kind of up and over it does not touch where the tree is all right, there's a little bit of white space there, but it's just sort of this sort of swoop, all right? You'll notice that there's another shadow on the left-hand side, but that's because there's a tree over there, so we're not gonna add that in. But what we are gonna do is just put a tiny bit of a shadow right off the side of our tree, just a teeny little bit like that. So it's not much at all, okay? We're also gonna take a little bit of that color and just drop it in to the bottom left side of the tree. Just to darken that up a little bit more, the bottom left side. Okay? All right, so now we have to let this dry again because our final um, step is going to be to put a glaze, oh, let me see. Yeah, it's just not dry enough yet. We want this to be bone dry because our final step is going to be put a glazed layer 
all right, over the base, and then add some, some glittery snow sparkles inside of our globe. We're also gonna use an eraser to take away any lines that are left. So this has to be absolutely bone dry, okay? So we're gonna let that dry, and then we'll be back to do the final, final touches. Okay, so I think this is really, really dry, which is great. And so now I'm gonna go in with my pencil eraser again, and I'm just gonna make sure that all of those pencil lines are gone. See how I'm just moving around. And that's the beauty of the colors that we've used here. Um, they erase, that they allow pencil to be erased. There are certain pigments, especially when we're using paints like the Daniel Smith paints, things like that, that stain the paper and therefore adhere, like yellows and rose, rose colors are really bad about that. So they stain the paper and they make it really, really difficult to get the pencil lines out. But these lovely handmade paints, and even in traditional paints when you're using these pigments like yellow ochre and raw umber and stuff, they really let you um, erase. So now we, we're we almost there, and we're gonna put our, um, well first we're gonna look at this for a minute. So if there's anything that I feel like I need to change, it might be just to enhance the area around the highlights just a little bit, okay? And then maybe make this side of the globe a little bit darker. Because if I look at my reference image, this side is a little bit darker than this side. So this side is nice and pale. Remember we were lifting out um, pulling our, our paintbrush through and softening that line. So what we could do is just, oh, I need to open up my water, is just use our the tip of our brush to take a little bit of this blue and raw umber mix in a very pale concentration. So just wake it up with a wet brush, okay? And then all we're gonna do is put just a tiny, tiny bit along the edge of these highlights just to enhance them a little bit more and then a tiny bit along the edge of our globe on the right side just a little bit it kind of comes down now we're going to clean our brush and dry it off as always and just soften so we don't have that hard line but you see how it just emphasized it a little bit We can just sort of pull it down, and the same with this. We don't want that hard line, so we can just soften it out toward the tree. Okay, and that takes a little practice, but look how much that did for our painting. Okay, really great. Oops, water on there. So now we're gonna put our final glaze on the base, and we're gonna wake up that mix that we made with the raw umber and the blue, so it's nice and transparent. If you need to add more water to it, add more water to it. I don't know if you can see how transparent this is. It's very, very light, okay? Very, very light. And all we're gonna do is take that on our brush and we're gonna paint the entire um, base with a layer of this color. It's, it's like a glaze. And it's very, very transparent. You will still see all of that lovely shading that we did with our brown. But this will just unify it. And then we can just drop in a little bit more where we see those highlights. There. See how that just unified it and gave it a little bit of a special look. And I hope you noticed <laughs> that I totally went out of the lines here. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna take a piece of paper towel and I'm just gonna blot it right up next to that. And then I can clean that up later if I want to. And if I also wanted to, that, that you know, if I wanted to paint a background later, that would just become part of the shadow. So I'm really happy with my base, okay? Now, we're going to put some snowy details, okay? And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my white paint and get it nice and juicy in the palette and then put a little bit on my palette here. 
okay? And I'm going to get another brush. You could use the tip of this brush, but it, you know, it's going to be a little bit trickier, and I'm always for making things as easy as possible. So if you have like a, a size one pointed round or anything that's tiny, this is actually a size two. It's going to be easier than using a, a bigger brush like a, a squirrel mop. And I'm just going to saturate this pointed round with my white paint. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could make it really easy for myself and I could cut out a piece of tracing paper around this, all right, and just sort of spatter paint, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the tip of my brush and I'm just going to start dotting this white paint around. Some dots will be bigger, some will be smaller, and I'm going all over. The globe. I'm staying away from those highlights. I don't necessarily want to go there, okay? But I can go all over the globe. And this white is very soft, but when it dries, it has a faint shimmer that I just love. On the tree, I'm going to be a little bit more careful and just use the very tip and just judiciously put some snow over the dark green tree. Just little bits here and there, some bigger than others, but just mostly sparse and not, not get, don't, don't get too carried away there. We don't want to just cover it up with snow. Just keep adding a little bit here and there. There, so sweet. All right, so when this dries, and it might be really hard to see on camera, but you'll see it in person. It's just the slightest little flurry of snowflakes, and when it dries, it'll have a faint shimmer in it. This cumulus um, is just gorgeous. It has It's mostly white, but it has this tiny bit of mica in it, just enough to make it pearly when it dries. I find it incredibly beautiful. Just keep adding a little bit more until you're happy with the snow. Now, if you like a look of a snow globe with glitter, you could also use like Wild Thorn um, um, Silvery Moon paint. You know, you could even do gold. You could do Sun Gold Mica. That would be fine too. I just really wanted to keep mine white like snow and have this beautiful pearly white. Um, Wild Thorn also makes a white paint called Snow. That would be that would be really nice as well. Um, I actually don't have it here, it's at my studio. Um, I haven't been there in a few weeks, so um, I can't show you that one, but that one would also work just fine. There we go. There. So that, my friends, is our snow globe. It's pretty simple, you could, you could enhance it in many ways. You could put some Christmas balls on the tree. You could put um, three trees. You could do many things. But what I really want you to understand is the process of how you go about creating something like this, okay? Um, once, you know, and I have to say, I want to put a little bit more of this right here on the edges because I feel like that would be visible there. See how just enhancing that a little bit gave me the, the depth perception, like that base continues around to the other side. So what I really want you to understand is the process here and what makes things... Sorry, my camera's acting up. What makes things look translucent by, by kind of putting a different color of the things you see from the background, um, how you leave highlights, how you can darken around highlights, all of those things, okay? And so 
once you learn the process and you try this a couple times, you can you can just forget about everything and, and create your own snow globe and be more expressive and loose with it like Janet did. You know, Janet's um, have that gift of intuition in them and they're so dreamy and um, really are unique to her. And so that's what I hope is that I give you the tools here and, and the techniques on, and the process of how to go about it. You can practice it a couple times and then you can make it completely your own. And what a beautiful Christmas card this would make, right? Or a holiday card of any kind, a winter birthday. Um, it's just lovely. So I hope this was fun. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I'm just so glad to be back here on YouTube. Thanks so much for your patience. Take care.